Watch the incredible process of bullets being made. In the US alone each year, around 10 million bullets are produced. But the real question is, how? Well, that's the big topic we'll be investigating in today's video. Welcome back to Top Tech, where we investigate the amazing technology that makes our modern world work. It's a long and extremely satisfying process watching a bullet go from a block of copper alloy to cartridge ready to load. The second stage in the process is called swaging, and it's actually pretty weird. So, let us know what you think of it in the comments when you see it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to fire around into that like button. The more likes we get for the YouTube algorithm, the more ammunition we have to keep making this kind of content. And don't forget to watch right until the end, because this one's going out with a bang. Number 1. Bullet or Cartridge Here's the thing. When most people talk about bullets, they actually mean something else. They probably mean cartridges. The cartridge is the thing that you load into a weapon, and it's comprised of four parts, of which the bullet is just one. As well as the bullet, there's the casing, which is like a container holding all the parts of the cartridge together. Then there's the primer, and the propellant, and these set the bullet on its trajectory out of the weapon and towards the target. So. Now that we've got the technical detail out of the way, let's find out what bullets are actually made of. Number 2. What are bullets made of? You can get many types of bullets. Typically, they're made of a metal alloy, but you can get rubber bullets too. These are considered to be non-lethal and are typically used by law enforcement for things like crowd control. The metal bullets are usually made of copper or gliding metal, an alloy of copper and zinc. Sometimes you can also get aluminum, bismuth, bronze, copper, plastics, rubber, steel, tin, and tungsten used in bullets too. Now, metals are strong and tough, and that makes them difficult to process with machinery. So a key part of the bullet making process actually involves greasing the metal so that the bullet can be shaped by machines without causing damage to either. Waxes are like carnauba wax, made from the carnauba palm, oils, and molybdenum disulfide, referred to as molly, are used to do this. However, bullet makers keep the exact formulae of the wax they use secret from their competitors. Number 3. How do bullets work? A cartridge is a bit like a firework. It's designed to propel the final section, the bullet, out of the weapon at speed. At the back, there's the primer, and this acts like a firework's fuse. It sets a light, and this creates a small fire. This small fire sets off the next section of the cartridge, which is the propellant, effectively the bullet's main engine. It powers the bullet down the gun and through the air to the target. Then there's the front part of the cartridge, which is the actual bullet, a metal cylinder that tapers to a point so that it moves through the air with less resistance. The pointed end of the bullet means it travels faster and further while also penetrating into whatever material the target is made from, including metal. Number 4. Now, how are they made? So, now we know how bullets work and what they're made of, how are they actually formed? Well, it's a four-step process. It starts with step 1, smelting followed by step 2, extrusion and swaging. Then there's step 3, copper electroplating, before the final stage of swaging and polishing. Number 5. Step 1. Smelting. The process starts with smelting. You might notice that this world sounds a little like melting, and that's a good clue. Smelting is the name for extracting metal from its ore by through heating and melting. Lots of bullet manufacturers produce their own metal ingots, whether it's lead or copper, so they can control their hardness and quality. That's because a well-balanced quality metal makes the best bullet. It allows for an optimal fit to a barrel's internal profile. So, once the smelting is over and done with, it's time for step two. Number six, step two, extrusion and swaging. When you've got the metal ingots out of the smelting vessel, you need to turn them into perfectly round wires, which can then be made into bullets. And that process is called extrusion. The metal is pushed through a die to create a round shape. 
This can be a bit difficult as sometimes extrusion can leave air bubbles in the metal which damages its quality. The key is to maintain a uniform, dense metal throughout the extrusion process as this produces a better bullet. Next comes swaging. This odd word comes from the old French term swage, meaning decorative groove or ornamental molding. The swage is also the tool used to shape the metal wires. Swaging involves the metal being compressed into a die to form it into the tapered shape of a bullet. Typically, this is done at room temperature, which is known as a cold press. That's because this stage doesn't require as much energy to shape the bullet, so the metal doesn't need to be heated up. Swaging is an important step because this is where bullets are aligned to the dimensions and weight of the desired caliber. If you get this stage right, it means you'll produce consistent and reliable bullets every time. Some manufacturing processes involve casting instead of extrusion and swaging. This is where the molten metal isn't ever formed into ingots. Instead, it's poured straight into a cast in the shape of a bullet, where it cools and hardens in the right shape. However, casting isn't as reliable as extrusion and swaging. That's because metals expand when heated and contract when cooled, making it hard to create a bullet of the exact right size using the casting method. By contrast, swaged bullets are formed at the temperature at which they'll be used, meaning you can form them in molds of the precise size you require. If you do cast bullets, you often have to swage them afterwards anyway. That's because voids commonly found in casting are pressed out during swaging. Essentially, swaging is a much more reliable method to produce high-quality bullets, and that's why it's more commonly used than casting. Number 7. Step 3. Copper Electroplating Now you have the metal in the desired shape. The next stage is treating the metal to give it a strong outer casing. So, you immerse the metal in different chemical and electroplated copper solutions. The aim is to ensure the copper bonds perfectly with the metal bullet themselves to create a layer of copper plating only 200 microns, 8 thousandths of an inch, in thickness. The thickness of the layer is directly proportional to the time required for the plating, so a thinner layer takes less time to plate. Number 8. Step 4. Final Swaging and Polishing Once the bullets have their copper plating, they're sent to hydraulic presses for a final swaging. The final step is really important because bullets need to be the exact right size and shape to fit into the barrel without causing a blockage. Any imperfection in the shape of the bullet could cause it to get stuck in the barrel or change the direction of its flight through the air so it won't hit the target. That's why bullets need to be perfectly concentric without any irregularities in the surface roundness, especially in the base. Then the process finishes with cleaning and polishing, which ensures the bullets will move easily through the barrel and look pretty shiny too. And there you have it, perfect bullets all manufactured and ready to fire. It's been an interesting process to get here, and we hope you've enjoyed following along with us. If you have, let us know by liking this video or leaving a comment. This shows us that we've hit the target on this occasion, and we should keep making content just like this. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the amazing technological innovations that we'll be firing at you in the coming weeks. Until then, take care, and we'll be seeing you next time on Top Tech.